Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everybody. Um, I just had some good luck. Well, it's somebody else's misfortune. Um, we gave uh, Homebrew as gifts for Christmas this year, and uh, one of the people that received it doesn't like beer. I know. So I went out, got him a bottle of wine, brought it over, and he gave me back the beer that I gave him, which is great because it was a pale ale that I really wanted to drink myself anyway. So what, uh, what to have with my pale ale? Well, I live in Spain and we like tapas and I'm gonna make something called gambas alejios or gambas al pipil. Uh, it's, it's a, a tapa, a Spanish tapa. It's really, really simple and it's one of my favorite things to eat in the world if you like shrimp. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make that and I'm going to start pouring my pale ale. So here it goes. First and foremost, this is a California Dreamin' Pale Ale, otherwise known as Sueño de California Pale Ale. So I wrote this, uh, I designed this label. This is the one that I was sticking on with uh, gelatin on my other video. So if you haven't seen that, you can certainly do so. But that's a uh, pale ale malt, uh, caramel malt. Um, there's hops, centennial, uh, cascade, citra, mosaic, uh, and California ale yeast. But uh, there it goes. Have it in the trusty Grosch bottle. Wow. Good carbonation. Okay, let's take a look at that. Now you probably see it's a nice sunset orange type of color very nice tight little white bubbles nice head you can see from their glow it's quite nice now i don't know what you can probably see it on the head there's a little black speckly thing floating around on my camera lens and i have no idea what the hell that is you see that anyway let's get to cooking Okay, firstly, get about a pound of, uh, of shrimp, which I peel and devein. Okay, you want a little bit of parsley, half a lemon, about five or six cloves of garlic, just not really minced, but chopped, so you can see that they stay fairly whole. Um, yeah, I didn't want cumin. What the heck did they get cumin for? Hold on a second. I wanted crushed red pepper. So I got some crushed red pepper, salt, and here's the magic ingredient. This is uh, paprika. It's a Spanish paprika. Um, it's a smoky type of paprika. So if you go to your specialty shop and look for Spanish paprika, not the spicy or the, the picante, uh, get the, the, it's called dulce, but it, it's not really that sweet. It's, it's actually more smoky than it is sweet, but it's a bright red color, really nice. Um, I'm going to serve it in what we traditionally use is like uh, earthenware uh, dishes and that's it. So let's get this started. I'll try to fast forward the boring parts. Okay. So I think I've got you positioned okay. So you can see what I'm doing, more or less. Okay. of hops between the cascade that centennial good stuff the citra was right at the flame out and the mosaic was in the dry hop just a really good combo okay. I'm gonna start putting the oil
recording, watching a hot pan. Okay. I have about a pound of shrimp, so I'm using about a half, half cup of uh, olive oil. And here's the gauge to find out when it's ready. Just put a few pieces of garlic in. When it begins to sizzle, then you know you're about ready. So right now it's it's beginning to bubble a little bit. Not getting any better. All right, so that looks all right. You see how it's swimming around? Let's put in the garlic. I just kind of do tight little circles at it spreads the garlic around, a lot of that moisture just evaporates out of it. What we're looking for is that it turns, it starts to turn like a golden brown type of color. You don't want to make it crispy, you just want to make it so it begins to caramelize and when it starts to take on a toasty color, we're going to take it off for a second, put in the cold uh, shrimp, and that's going to bring the temperature down to the hot oil so it doesn't overcook the garlic. We don't want a toasty garlic. It might seem crispy or toasty at first, but once you start putting moist ingredients like garlic and lemon in, it's going to turn it into like a caramelized. Now, right now, it's it's still fairly bright yellow. It's beginning to change colors around the edges, so it's not going to take very long. Now, the steam has really calmed down, which means most of the moisture in the garlic has come out and it's going to promote browning. Okay, now I can tell that it's it's definitely beginning to brown <clears throat> brown a little bit. I would say that about half of the garlic already is now turning into a golden brown color. I don't know if you can see that color there. You'll probably see it more on this end than you can over here, but move it around. See the swirling action going there? Okay, now it's now you see a lot of it looking a toasty color. I'm just going to take it a little bit off the flame. Put in all the shrimp. Now shrimp cooks very quickly. You can probably see it's already turning slightly pink, but you see that golden color on the garlic? Okay, so the sizzling calmed down completely. I'm going to put it back on the heat. I'm just trying to, <clears throat> I'm going to get the shrimp flat against the surface of the pan. So it begins to turn. And we're not going to leave it very long because like I said, shrimp, shrimp cooks very quickly. So now it's beginning to sizzle. At this point, I'm going to salt it, a nice three-fingered pinch. I don't want it over salty. Okay, it's, now it's starting to turn translucent, so I'm going to start flipping over everything that looks gray. You don't want to wait too long to do this because if you wait until everything's already pink, it'll be too late by the time you get to the last ones. Okay, the shrimp is definitely losing volume. It's losing its liquid and it's making it into this broth. 
And the garlic is looking fairly toasty at this point, which is not a bad thing. I said once. Okay. I forgot an ingredient. I forgot the bay leaf. I'm sorry, I'll just put it down in, in the high heat. Okay. Next, I want to put half a lemon. The juice of half a lemon. I'm not really worried about seeds. It, it doesn't really impact it all that much. Okay, that toasty garlic is actually now in, this is like the broth of the shrimp, the lemon. That's why all this steam is now coming out. You don't want to overcook it either. Okay. Now, the paprika. Helps if I don't get it all over the place. And parsley. And at the end, the crushed red pepper. Let me plate this up. The final product. A nice pale ale, red in color, really beautiful, out of focus. Trust me, out of focus or not, it's a beautiful thing. And the garlic shrimp. There we go, now it's all focused in. So you can see it's all done very nice, it's hot, all the caramelized garlic. Cheers everybody, happy Homebrew Wednesday.